Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd here, the internet's busiest music nerd, the internet's busiest music nerd, the internet's busiest music nerd, the internet's busiest music nerd. Yeah, and it's time for a review of this new album from Horse Lords, Comradely Objects. This is a brand new LP from Baltimore band Horse Lords, who we last heard from album-wise, just as the pandemic was ramping up in 2020 through their fourth full-length LP, The Common Task, one of my favorite records from that year, mostly for its hypnotic and minimal grooves, which brought together various strains of weirdo rock, jazz, and drone, which has been the defining characteristic of their music for years now, going back to their earliest releases, and I would say since then the band has only gotten tighter and sharper, greatly improving on their ability to pull off these intense and and entrancing instrumental performances. They absolutely nailed it on the common task, and Comradely Objects here is so close in terms of vibe, it basically feels like a second helping. Right from the intro, Zero Degree Machine, which kicks off with a very crisp and intricate drum beat, topped with angular guitar leads and a distorted descending bass line, which pretty much locks me in right from the beginning, and for the next six minutes, the band essentially sticks to this track while finding a variety of ways to uh, subtly throw in variations, fill up space, intensify the groove, minute changes give way to bolder ones, and eventually we're at this glorious climax of burning guitar leads and dense polyrhythms. And the whole thing unfolds so organically, it's like watching a time lapse of uh, roots growing and spreading in all directions, until you have this whole system of plant life living underneath the soil. Then there's a nice little sax cooldown toward the end to finish things out, but not every moment on this thing ends as great Gracefully. For example, the cut Mess Mend. Love the way the synths play into the groove on this track. I wish that was something that uh, popped up more often on this record, but uh, ultimately the song ends with some abruptly introduced skipping loops that uh, start cycling so fast they kind of just play out into oblivion and the song is just uh, over. It vanishes before our ears. And I kind of wish it reached that point uh, via a way that just had more flow to it. But despite that complaint, the progressions of these tracks are usually more gratifying than they aren't. We have the Fiery May Brigade, which is a jagged jazz freakout with these chaotic layers of honking horns and squawking guitars that are locked in together but simultaneously feel like they are fighting to be heard. It begins almost like a polite shouting match and progressively uh, turns into this all-out brawl, a violent bar fight really with uh, bottles and chairs flying in every direction, eventually introducing this dissonant drone as the dust settles to cool things down. The very very short Solidarity Avenue is a curious interlude. Uh, it kind of sounds like something that would soundtrack a chase scene during a detective show. It's a little out of place in that respect, I suppose, but uh, you also do have the 10 minute law of movement, which takes its sweet time on the intro with a lot of eerie drones, quite unsettling. Some steadily driving riffs and drums begin to bubble up underneath all of this, chugging along mechanically like a train. Over this, what builds is this subtle progression of intervals, chords, and harmonies that begins very unwelcoming and sour and dark, but progressively turns more triumphant and warm, or at the very least more visceral. We get a great segue at the end of this track into the following run which is uh, so close in the way it kind of syncs up grooves, it feels like a musical epilogue. Nice that it's able to extend that momentum in such a cool way, but it's the closing track and landing where I feel like this record really fails to uh, come through. While I do appreciate the experiment that this track uh, attempts, and for the most part very much pulls off, where you get this round of sax, drums, keys, and guitar all kind of uh, in rotation, uh, following each other with like a single note or hit to the point where it feels so fluid it's like all this sound is coming from one person playing one instrument. Uh, that's a really difficult thing to pull off for as long as the band continues to perform in this way uh, for the duration of this track. But like with that being said, even though they pull off uh, this interesting trick, um, it doesn't really develop or build into uh, anything noteworthy in terms of like a composition. It's just kind of a cool experiment idea that turns into a, a one-dimensional recording for the most part. Still though, I thought this record overall was pretty good. If you loved The Common Task, you are most likely going to enjoy uh, what the band does here as well. And if you're looking for something within the realm of rock or jazz music that is odd, off the beaten path, minimal, and really just like kind of digs deep into the most primal 
parts of your brain and gives you all of that just like, you know, addictive repetition and uh, hypnotizes you for long periods of time. Uh, this thing is the thing that you want to hear. Plus, of course, again, uh, the production from this band is really quality, really crisp, really vivid, and the performances are super tight, super great, really cohesive band, and uh, I'm feeling a decent too strong seven on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video for you to check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Horse Lords, forever.